Welcome to this demonstration of effective cybersecurity that is simple, open, and automated. A demonstration of accelerated incident response with for endpoints, threat grid, and umbrella investigate. Let's talk about intelligence. First of all, the Cisco Talos team sees 1.5 million malware samples a day, one third of all the email traffic, more web requests than any company in the world, part of the open source community, 1,100 traps, 250 full time threat researchers to take intelligence from all these different sources the endpoint, network, cloud, email, web open source and the services team distilling that to the collective threat intelligence cloud with advanced mail protection. So it provides protection of known threats, things that are already known bad, both on the edge as well as in content and on the endpoint. But what if something has never been seen before? Well, then you have dynamic malware analysis with ThreatGrid, and that's what we're going to demonstrate how this works. So this is the AMP for Endpoints dashboard, and I see that there was an alert that with ThreatGrid, there was a detection of malware. What AMP for Endpoints has is something called prevalence, low prevalence. So they found that if one file exists on one single endpoint and none of the others, there's a higher probability that that is indeed malicious. And so those executions of those files that are not seen anywhere else in the network are automatically sent to ThreatGrid for dynamic malware analysis. And I can actually see that report here of that analysis. We're going to dig into this in just a moment. Let's first of all go take a look at how this file got on there on this machine called Demo Low Prevalence. And for that, what I'm going to do is go to my inbox where I saw that there were those alerts that were waiting for me. I can see there's a number of machines and there were incidents that spanned less than a minute, about a minute, and so on because it was using that intelligence of things that were already known to be bad. Well, on page two, we have our low prevalence here. We see it took about four hours of time. And what happened was something executed on the endpoint and it was sent to threat grid for analysis and then automatically you know, it has to be simple to use, open through APIs and then automation. So I can go and take a look at this, the events here to get a better understanding about what is happening on that endpoint to more clearly see what's happening there. So I see that there's a file that contained the benign extension, that PDF and the executable is used to hide the executable from the, the user and here's the user right here. We see that it did execute on that single machine, and so it automatically grabbed that file, sent it to ThreatGrid for dynamic malware analysis. It came back with a detection of the threat score 100 from the sandbox of ThreatGrid, and it automatically put that into quarantine. That quarantine was successful. So understanding how that got on the endpoint, I'm going to go back to my dashboard and use something called device trajectory. That's going to help me see how it first got there on the endpoint to answer some of those instant response questions. So I first see that SV Host is currently listening there, so that's happening on the endpoint right now, but I can go back in time until I find that yellow, that indicator of compromise. So I see that Chrome was out here browsing, I see the IP address and the port number, and it was used to download this, this report.pdf here, and then it went ahead and executed under SVC Host. While it was executing, it started dropping DLLs and PYDs, a whole bunch of them. If you don't know what a PYD is, that's okay, we'll see it. When we look at the analysis report, we'll find out what that is. We all learn. And then it goes and starts communicating out with Russia. So that's what's happening on the endpoint. But while we were sleeping or on a break or whatever, it saw this low prevalence executable, sent it to threat grid for analysis. We sent it to, came back as malicious. So it was automatically quarantined. We see it's not in virus total. We have the ability to do a couple of things, such as if we had to block it ourselves, but that's already happened for us. So let's go take a look at that file analysis report that happened for us automatically. And we open that up here, the file analysis report. I can watch the video so I can see what happened on the endpoint. And I see there's a pop-up, this report.pdf. So that tells me that I may want to go, go and interact with it later. You have that opportunity to do so. I can download that video if I want to as well. I can download the sample. And I see that there are some very malicious behaviors for persistence on here. What this tells me is I probably want to pivot into the full threat grid to go learn more about this. And so what you do if you download a Chrome extension that allows you to go ahead and pivot between the Cisco Cloud Security products, it's Cisco-AMP-TG for ThreatGrid Umbrella. If you Google for that, it's going to go ahead and find for you that Chrome extension, and you download and install that. It allows me to pivot in to see intelligence as I look at hash values, IP addresses, registry keys, domains, and so on between the AMP products, Umbrella, Investigate, and ThreatGrid. So I did that already for a time. So let's pivot here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go and do a search inside ThreatGrid. So everything submitted by AMP is sent by private default. No one besides my organization can see this. It was my sample. 
I can then pivot into that report. If I want to resubmit that sample to go and interact with it because I saw that there was that pop-up, I can do so. If I want to make it so the rest of the world has access to it because it is malicious and so it, that part of that collective intelligence be part of the threat grid feeds, I have the ability to take off the privacy here and I can decide how long I'd like to interact with that as well. And here is the virtual machine used as well as the amount of time. So I'll go ahead and resubmit that. Threatcrit has no presence inside the virtual machine. There's no hooks or DLLs or anything inside there to give away that you're inside a sandbox. In fact, when malware starts looking for that, that's another indicator. So we'll come back and look at that here in a second. So here's that behavior that kicked off and said, wow, this thing is very malicious. In plain language, it tells us what happened here. They created this auto run for infection, both laterally as well as persistent. And then it drops some artifacts that are seen in the AV solutions as well. So the sample itself wasn't seen in any type of AV, but it dropped some artifacts that were done so. And then we see this compiled Python. There's our PYDs. If we ever under wondered what those were, it tells us in plain language what that was happening there. So that's some pretty serious behavior. This threat score and these behavioral indicators help the tier one analyst be able to make a decision of escalation or remediation. But of course, this happened for us already automatically because we had that automation. So what I can do now is take a look at the network activity here. And I see here the communication that I saw in AMP for endpoints. And I can right click on that and I can go and take a look at that and learn more about this as well. Before I do that, I see there's my analysis running and here is that sample. I can actually come in here and interact with that sample in this club box, a safe environment. I can reboot the machine. I can see other samples related to it. I can pull down tools, interact with it, and so on, because some samples want that human interaction. So I can see the runtime there, how long it'll be, and then it'll give me this updated report based on what any changes of the behavior based on the human interaction. So this is the report that I asked to come back for on the RU domain. And I see here the hosted URLs. So go and grab that JPEG, just like we had seen inside the for endpoints. Now I have greater intelligence. Here's some IP addresses that are known to be associated with this as well. It's going out to Russia, and here's some samples. This also was a destination of a sample here that wasn't from me. A, a document establishing network communication is very, very malicious behavior. So that's something I definitely want to dig into more. I can pivot into an umbrella investigate now because I have that ability, and I can go do a search on that, and it's going to give me greater intelligence about this particular domain. I can see when the requests have been made. I can see registration information. I can go to the name server and get more information, including the geo location of where requests are made and so on. So you have a lot of details about the architecture for the attack, as well as included our samples that have been known to communicate with that. And of course, this brings us back to these behavioral indicators that we've seen previously. So we have a number of things such as the network connectivity, associated samples. You have to have a threat grid subscription in order to get this additional information here. But I can pivot back to my full threat grid report here by clicking on that, this full circle. And I'll just show you one more thing before we wrap up here. And that's this processes graph, which is really interesting. So if I click on the process graphs, it's going to visually help me understand what happens on the endpoint. And there's a report at BDF. And here's the PYDs and the DLLs that were dropped on there. And then we see there's changes to the registry key as well, additional intelligence that we hadn't seen on AMP for endpoints. And then we have these artifacts here as well, which we can download. We can see the different artifacts that are dropped, whether they're written to disk, drop, pulled down from the network activity, injected into memory. Any of these PYDs or DLLs, you can download them. You can see other samples that have also interacted with them. We start to do some static analysis on that as well. You can then jump to the registry activity and see that in aggregate here as well, as well as the file system activity. Now, what you can also do in Threat Grid, which, because if you pivot in here, is you can download the sample, it's, excuse me, the report itself, which, well, in HTML to give to a fact finder, as well as the JSON, so you can integrate it into the product of your choice. And with that open API architecture, Threat Grid allows you to do that. You can also manually submit a sample as well here, and URLs, something that's unique for having the full subscription. You browse to the file, decide whether or not to make it private, choose your operating system, here and the runtime, but then you can see there's a large number of sample types that are supported here. So that's a demonstration how to accelerate your instant response through low prevalence of Cisco cloud-based security and how you can pivot from the AMP for endpoints, which already took care of it, to great, greater intelligence to answer those questions of what happened, where it is, what, how large the infection is, 
and what type of behavior is occurring there with these additional indicators of compromise. Thank you so much. If you would like to get a demonstration of this, if you go to panaceathrecord.com and choose sign up for a new account, it will come directly to me and I will connect you with your AMP and Threcrid and Umbrella Investigate representative. Thank you so very much for your time and have a wonderful day.